The LSH approach we have previously discussed was designed for d-dimensional vectors. That means that the elements, like the images, would be transformed to a d-dimensional vector space, and then we can find, for a given query vector, the more similar ones. What we will discuss now, very briefly, is one of the probably most known algorithms for handling large sets of documents, for instance HTML documents, was proposed by Andre Broder already some years ago, this is called min-hashing, and this works as follows. Let me illustrate this first before we go to the slides. So we have a database or like a collection, let's say in Google, and here we have documents in A, B, C, D, E, and so on. These are documents, and these documents consist of objects. Let's say we uh, talk about HTML or text documents, so these documents contain terms. So what we want to do is to compute, let's say we want to find plagiarism, we want to find those objects, A, B, C, D, and so on, which are very similar. Similarity here is defined by means of the so-called Jacquard coefficient, which is defined between two sets, A and B, simply as the cardinality of the intersection between the two sets divided by the cardinality of the union between the two sets. Yeah, it's, it's one if these two sets are identical regarding the elements they contain. There are some, of course, more fancy ways to compute similarity between um, web documents or documents in general around the concept of shingling that would not look at separate terms but would create shingles, but in, for the purpose of minhashing it doesn't really matter uh, if it's shingles or individual plain terms. Okay, so how does mean hashing work now? We take a hash function h, and here we don't have any um, requirements on, LS, um, on h. For instance, um, it doesn't have to be, or it should not be locality sensitive. It should just be a traditional hash function that maps the input uniformly to a certain space. And here we have hash functions that map our terms, so the things which are contained in the sets a and b, um, to an integer value. So if we, if we now look at one specific set, big A, how does A look like? So we have a document, A, and here we have terms in, right? We have hello, and world, and so on, and, um, and data, and base, and table, and so on. So what now minhashing is doing, it is applying the hash function h on the each of these terms of document A. So we compute h of hello. And let's say we get a 7 as output. Now we apply h on, on world and so on, and we get a 2 and so on. So now we look at all of these values and we remember the smallest of these values. Let's say in this case the 2 is the smallest, and we call this hmin of our set A is 2. And we do the same now for set B. We look at set B. We have, let's say, information and table, and we have world as well and so on. And we do the same now, right? We apply h on information, we apply h on table, and so on. And of course we also apply h on world. The hash function is the same, so we would get 2 as well here, and the same, um, let's say we get for information we get like a 8, and for table we get I know, 5, and so on. And we also do the same here. We take the minimum, and we call that, again, min h min of b, and in this case, let's say it's 2 as well. It doesn't have to be 2, because, just because world is in, because there could also be another term here that is um, term x, for instance, and there could be a 1, right? But let's just assume we have the h min value the same as for the set A. And now the interesting part is, or the theory says, when this is like kind of surprising, 
the probability that these h min values are the same equals the Jacquard coefficient between a and b. That means when we want to determine now in our big collection here the documents or the, the uh, documents, yes, A, B, C, and so on, which are similar in a pairwise fashion, we can make use of the of an indexing based on the min value. And we don't have to really go through all of these documents and do a pairwise comparison and computing the Jacquard coefficient in an expensive way, but we can do that using this min hashing. And this is like this famous approach. And you see that this is also similar a little bit to the sketches we have seen earlier that also would make use of some hash function which uniformly distributes elements and then um, looking at the k minimum one and so on. Right? But this is like a bit different, of course, but uh, the spirit is the same. Um, you will get into this. So now there's, of course, the idea or the, the um, thing to still like solve. Why is this true? Why is the probability that the hash function output is the same? Why is this exactly the same or the expectation like the um, Jacquard coefficient gives you? And the idea, roughly speaking, is that if there is an element which is the minimum one, and this element is in both of the sets, that means the element is in the intersection. So here, the probability that this element is there is the size of the intersection divided by the size of the union. And now we will see some examples where we apply, in some small examples, these um, min hashing on some actual documents, and then we see how we're interpreting the results. One thing already to say is that the, the estimate of the uh, Jacquard coefficient here that we're getting in this case, having only one hash function can be only zero or one, which is a bit funny, right? So it can be zero or one, either the hash value is the same or not, but we will solve this. You will see in a moment if we're introducing multiple hash functions. Okay, back to the slides. You see, same thing I have already mentioned. We have this h min and the definition of the Jacquard coefficient, and here is the full reference to this paper by Andre Broder or in the year 97, he published this already. Broder was like um, for some time, if I remember correctly, he was head of uh, research in Alta Vista search engine. This was like some years before even Google started. So he's a very famous uh, person in this context of web search, in particular also theory. Okay, here's an example. We have three sets or so three documents. In this case, these documents or sets contain um, some things like apples, vegetables, and fruits. You see here as a helper table, the hash value for the individual objects. And now what we do, using this table, we can now express, the, we can look up what are the hash values. For instance, apple would produce this one, right? So we have it here. Now we, if you're doing this for all of the elements of S1, we can compute H min. And we do this also for set two and set three. Right. Nothing else than applying the hash function. This table is only there that we can know, we can see what the hash function value, um, hash function output is. So in this example, we obtain h min of set S1 being this one, the h min of set S2 being this number, and h min of set 3 is this one. Now, according to the illustration of the earlier examples or the, the idea behind min hashing, we don't see any you know, any similarity because the hash function values h min are not the same pairwise, right? So these, these are not the same and this is not the same and so on. That means that we would get as an estimate that there is no similarity, so the Jacquard would be assumed to be there zero. That's of course not really true because, for instance, we have overlap, right? So the intersection is not empty between S1 and S2. As mentioned earlier, the probability that the h min value between two sets is the same 
equals the Jacquard coefficient. Now, as we have seen in the previous example, in this case, in interpreting these hash values, we would assume that the Jacquard coefficient between the sets is always zero. That means this does not really work very well, because first of all, we have seen that there was a similarity, but the estimate would be zero. And in any case, doing this will only give us the possibility to say it's exactly similar, so one, or it's not similar at all, it's zero. In the example, we saw that these values are all, all different. That means we would assume an estimate of zero, which is of course not true, as already said between a zero uh, set one and two days, of course, some overlap. Now the idea is, well, we take a second hash function. We have here a new hash function. You see the hash values here, and we're doing the same thing again. Then we are obtaining for hash function one, the same values as we have seen previously. But now for hash function two, we see that for set one and two, the min value, h min, is the same. Now in this case, we would estimate that the similarity between S1 and S2 is one half, because half of these hash values, h min, for the two hash functions, is one, and the other half is zero. For the other set similarities between two and three, and one and three, we would still have, like in the previous example, with only one hash function, the estimate being zero. Of course, it's still not perfect, we're still doing a mistake. If you're looking here at the exact Jacquard coefficient based on the example, it will be two divided by six, so one third and not one half. Yeah? But you see, the more and more hash function we are using, there's hope, and this is also what the theory says, that we can get a decent um, estimate for the Jacquard coefficient. Now, there are two sides here of this I should mention. One thing is, of course, to compute Jacquard efficiently if you have very many or very large documents. And the other idea here is that you can index now, like we did for hash indexing in general, and also for locality sensitive hashing, you can index now the sets as one and as two and as three according to the h min value. So if you have now an object you want to test if S4, how similar S4 is to these sets that you have um, in your database, and you have hash tables corresponding to the output, so the h min values, and you're doing the same computation, so you're computing h1 min, and you're getting a value, and you're computing h2 min, and you're getting another hash value, and you're looking up in the table for h1, this value here, and in the table for h2, this value here, and you're finding in the buckets those that overlap, and then you can compute for these that you're finding there, the documents, you can compute the estimate based on the how many times you have seen them in the same bucket. Or you can also look at the documents themselves and computing really on the um, terms the exact the exact um, similarity, the exact Jacquard coefficient. So there are two aspects to find candidates you want to look at. And also you can use min hashing to compute the uh, estimate for the Shakar. And both are of course important, particularly the first step. So if you have a co collection in Google, which consists of 10 billion documents, and you want to find plagiarism, or simply um, almost close copies, let's say, and you want to do that, you have 1 billion or 10 billion documents, and you want to look at uh, pairwise similarities, it doesn't make sense to look at 10 million to, ten, uh, to two, to the power of two many um, document comparisons, well, divided by two, of course, because we are smart. You don't want to do this because that's, of course, really wasteful. And this is exactly where min hashing comes into play. And again, it's not only min hashing based on the individual terms, but to mention that we did this in the undercredit course already, if you're looking at the term, like a document containing terms, you would not look only at the individual terms, 
but you would or could look at shingles. For instance, if you have hello and world in the document, you would not look at hello and world separately, but you would look at this as a two shingle, so two gram, you also say, and this gives you even better indication for the similarity of documents because you're looking at the order of these terms and not only if the terms occur in a document or not. That's min hashing. There are two variants. If you want to obtain more than one hash function, you can either have multiple independent, of course, hash functions, and then you're taking the min value, of course, for each of them. And then the estimated Jacquard coefficient is the fraction of identical min values, like we did in the previous example. We said it was one divided by two. You can also have one hash function and you're looking at the k smallest values, in which case here you can compute the Jacquard coefficient based on the Jacquard of these k smallest values. For both variants, the error is one divided by the um, square root of k. So this is quite nice. The going down, if you, if giving you more hash functions, you see how the error behaves. And of course, for practical purposes, like one or two hash functions are not enough. And three, you can play around with it. It's like, I cannot give you, of course, depending also on the data, but um, this is also kind of cheap, this hashing. So you don't have to be, or you can be generous here and allowing um, many hash functions. So you're getting very decent results.